to another edition of Pitch Grand Talk. Last year, the opening of the new parliament building created quite a furrow, and one word that was on everybody's mouth was the same goal. Now, have you ever wondered well, who was the person who manufactured the same goal and where did it come from? I'm very happy today to have with me Mr. Jitendra Vimudi. He's a managing partner at Vimudi Bangaru Jewelers who actually made the same goal. And for not just the same goal, Vimudi is today a 124 year old company and a legacy which is well known to everybody based in South India, particularly in Tamil Nadu and Chennai. Sir, good afternoon, Mr. Jitendra. Welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. Thank you. Uh, I just want to start about you know your legacy. It's a hundred and twenty-four year old legacy. So how have you you know managed to keep the brand alive for close to what would I say ten no twelve decades? How do you, how have you done that? Firstly, thank you for getting us to be on the show. It's a pleasure. It's an honor, really, for the Sengol. You mentioned that. Uh, the single work caused a, a big furor uh, when the new parliament was opened. The, uh, the single itself was made in 1947. Uh, it was uh, delivered on the 11th of uh, August uh, at, at the Chennai Central Station. It was then taken from there to Delhi. And uh, the rest is history. Uh, it was then lost and then found again, uh, thanks to the efforts of my brother Amar, uh, who uh, knew that the Sengol was made by the family and he was, uh, uh, you know, he took a lot of efforts to find out where the Sengol was and he traced it and found it uh, to be at the Allahabad Museum uh, and uh, we went, sent our representatives there. We took photographs, we measured the Sengol and then we had a replica made and post that uh, we also made a video because it was a, a, it was a great moment for the family. And uh, that video was circulated amongst our customers. And somehow this video reached the PMO's office. The PMO's office verified the, uh, the, the contents of the video. And they said it was true that such a single was made and it was uh, given to uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru on the, day, on the eve of the in, in, independence of India. And uh, the, the prime minister was uh, very keen to have the original single uh, to be restored at the, in the new parliament. So uh, we were invited to uh, Delhi to the PM's uh, residence and the entire family was honored. It was a, a great event for us. It was a, uh, see the, uh, we, we've uh, been told repeatedly, you know, what uh, one generation does uh, will have the effects on the next follow, following generations. And this was so true in our case. Uh, the second generation made this end goal and the fourth and the third generations benefited and honor, were honored of the work that was uh, done by them. Um, right from the beginning, uh, the craftsmanship or, you know, making sure that the, the quality of the craftsmanship should be the highest was uh, the, uh, one of the pillars on which the brand was built. And uh, uh, I can say proudly that Amar and me, uh, we follow the same uh, uh, pillar strength that we get from the uh, ancestors. We follow the same, uh, uh, you know, the efforts to make sure that the quality of the workmanship is top class even today. And we are, uh, we have made a, a replica of the Sengol that is now kept in the Allahabad Museum where the original one was taken from. So um, it's a real pleasure to be here and share our thoughts. Uh, We've been around for 12 decades. Uh, everything is not done by one generation. I'm the fourth generation. So uh, you could say that each of us have like 30 good years in which we uh, do something for uh, in terms of business in helping the brand grow. Uh, the first generation, uh, they had the most difficult times because uh, establishing a name, creating something of a, uh, to achieve a certain standard, and take it further is one of the most difficult things. Uh, today we have a lot of competition. Uh, there are more number of buyers, there are more number of sellers. Uh, before it was less number of sellers, less number of buyers. So there was competition back then. And uh, my grand great grandfather, he would make jewelry at home, take it to the uh, temple function uh, festivals, 
sit outside the temples and uh, be there to sell like you know little nose pins or little pendants or uh, the thali and the mangalyams uh, he would get it blessed by the temple priest and then give it to the uh, customers and uh, it so happened that his business uh, i mean his clientele increased and they moved from uh, the the house in the front of the house was the showroom and they set set up a independent uh, uh, showroom for jewelry so this was way back in the 1920s and uh, before pre independence and then the second generation as we, as we all know they made the sengol and every generation has to has contributed towards the brand's journey it's uh, to the legacy of the brand uh, it's it's uh, uh, you know through the years the number of people who were there to caretake caretakers for the brand uh, increased and therefore there was more hands available and the brand grew they went from uh, one of the uh, prime locations uh, uh, at that point of time which was paris where, where all the uh, all the business was happening all the activity the big hub for business was was paris or georgetown as it's now known um, and they moved to uh, tinaga it was in the 1950s and tinaga today we know how busy tinaga is so back then in the 50s uh, my father used to say like uh, when they go out at 6 o'clock in the evening there would be foxes on the road so wow. that was that's how deserted it was uh, tinaga itself so um, they have always thought of uh, like you know doing something different uh, going out expanding to newer uh, locations and uh, the third generation also became uh, responsible for preserving uh it's not every generation goes out there and does expansion 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 uh at some point preservation becomes a very important uh, uh need for the business and it's because of the third generation that we the fourth generation have something uh, to actually build on and uh m- now i am i'm very happy to say that the fifth generation that is my daughter is also my daughters both my daughters are getting into the business and taking on the mantle of running the business uh, so this is where we are it's not one generation that does all this it is over a period of time and uh, the 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 passion and the flair with which it's been done is what's important and we are very happy that uh, we have got this chance to be in this business and with a great uh, foundation and a super base uh, we are uh, the the thing is that you said that uh, uh 12 decades so how is it going it's uh, like you know you need to be relevant to the customers requirements uh during every phase of the journey uh if if you cannot be stereotyped as uh, a particular style of jewelry because then you know there are other people uh, who then would uh, take your place or you know you would lose out so there is a lot of opportunity in expanding your uh, you know offering uh, so we have you know uh, uh, taken up all the latest techniques that there are available me and amar we both uh, trained in belgium we went did our diamond grading there and uh, learned from the best in the business and uh, we were able to pass on all that uh, knowledge to our team and help build the the name that we brought If for diamonds today is is from all of that effort because uh, you know standardizing the process of selection and uh, then putting it to practice even after the jewelry is set making sure that every jewel is checked and uh, the standards of quality are met at at every stage i uh, mentioned generations so how are you reaching out to millennials and gen z or you know because when compared i'm just taking a wild guess that it must be probably because you know premium brand also the older generations must be your target audience so how are you reaching out to millennials and gen z um uh, the the older generation uh, they kind of have, pass on the confidence to the next generation uh, letting them know that this is a trusted place that they could go to and if we connect with the new generation uh, in terms of design in terms of the language that we use uh, they can resonate with uh, what we are saying um 
it is important that we uh, we keep refreshing our uh, outlook and refreshing the product offering itself uh, so that is how we have stayed relevant uh, today every generation that comes in they have uh, a need to do business differently and that has to be uh, i would say permitted for the business uh, to remain relevant um, when when i got into the business uh, we didn't have computers at that point it was the 90s early 90s and uh, i had to actually learn uh, basic programming i had to write a program and myself and then uh, me and my accountant explained to my father that this program can help us do the daily uh, closing of our books and once that was uh, my dad understood that computers can help us then he allowed us to actually share our uh, you know the process business process with the uh, software developer otherwise he was reluctant to share the business uh, process because he said that you know uh, secrecy is uh, important for our trade but we also felt that the need for uh, moving ahead and getting all of this information digitalized digitized and helping you know the whole uh, uh, computerization to help us build our business further uh so it, it it's like this every generation will have a challenge and uh, there will be a, there will have to be some clarity passed on to the uh, earlier generation for them to like feel confident about the change that was go- that's going to happen uh, now you know when you when movity probably started there wasn't that much of competition today you have both national brands and local brands as tough competition so you know you have a 124 year old legacy so other than that what is it that differentiates womity for your consumers oh, well uh, i like i said competition is going to be there it's uh, uh, going to help you to be a better jeweler it's going to be uh, helping the customer to get a better deal uh, it's uh, you know a business which is very close to the hearts of every uh, indian uh, it's uh, jewelry is uh, entrenched in our culture and uh, so for us uh, you know the thing is that as long as you are uh, passionate about uh, dealing with your clients you know understanding their needs uh, fulfilling uh, whatever requirements that they have and uh, uh, most important is after sales service uh, products which have been maybe made by your uncle uh, so if they can be uh, you know help to either give it a fresh look or if it can be uh, polished or if you can use the latest of technology to like you know repair it uh, all of these things uh, are meaningful to the customers and if we can do all of this then we'll be relevant to what our customer wants um it, it price is a very sensitive uh, uh, topic it's uh, you know all of us uh, want to buy uh, the best product at the less at the least price uh, everybody is aware like you know uh quality cannot come at a discount and they do uh, mm, you know they would like to pay uh, um the right price that's a better way of putting it so uh if you give the right price the right product the right service the right ambiance the right product offering there's a lot of things that you have to do right but there's no other way for uh, indians uh, uh, like you mentioned earlier when we had a conversation gold is seen as a security So can you just tell us the recent budget that came out has what has uh, what how has this impacted your industry yeah uh prior to the budget the rate of uh, customs duty on gold was 15% and there was a 3% gst uh internationally gold is sold at a certain price uh at the, at the end of the day india was 18% i mean our gold price was 18% more expensive than the international price uh the, there was a lot of uh, uh, illegal smuggling of gold and uh, the government uh, uh, decided to cut down the rate of du- uh, duty so that you know bringing down uh, uh, that from 15% to 9% uh, to 6% sorry there was a 9% uh, drop in the uh, customs duty that has uh significantly reduce the price of gold in india itself uh it it was almost uh, 500 to 600 rupees fall uh because of that and the customers uh, were, were delighted to have such a, a big cut it was uh not something that 
people knew that this was going to happen and they were absolutely delighted that this happened the price of gold has risen uh, like i mentioned to you earlier from january 2024 till today it's gone up by almost 20% internationally and this fall in price because of the duty reduction was a welcome uh, move uh, for the customers uh, you mentioned that when you started working in the business computers were just making their way in over the last few decades what we have seen is it's everything has become the focus has been uh, is now on digital so can you just talk about your digital imprint and how this has helped your brand i think uh, we've got used to uh, like you know getting information so quickly uh, you can google anything and within a few uh, within a milliseconds you get uh, uh, many many uh, answers uh, for your uh, uh, what you're seeking to know so uh, i think uh, with all of this information we've got uh, used to having uh, uh you know data uh, being there for us almost instantaneously and unless you computerize and unless you uh, you know you get use the te- latest technology in terms of uh, uh, it uh, will you be able to uh, service the needs of a customer uh, there is uh, augmented reality there is uh, uh, lots of ways uh, you know online sales uh, video calling all of this is uh, helping to offer uh door step service at the customers uh, uh, home itself uh but when it comes to jewelry we still feel that you know touch and feel is the most important so we've seen like every uh, retailer that's uh, on, uh, who is present only online having an offline presence as well so i think uh, you know offline is going to be the model for everybody uh online we would have a wider market to uh, which can we can reach out to a wider market and um, I, uh, uh, having having an offline presence is the key and making but also making sure that we have an online presence is very important for any brand any any business has to have an online presence and an offline presence so this is specifically for the jewelry sector i would say that because uh, you know because there's so much of design involved there's so much of uh, uh, variation in design uh, i, I maybe maybe clothes as well uh, you know you mentioned design and this is something with when i see jewelry it's the design which captivates the consumer and growing up i've seen uh, bbjs uh, you know the campaigns on out of home on hoardings and also in newspapers now how is the your media mix evolved because there's a lot of digital also which would have which is now the key yeah so yeah yeah so the uh, the media mix is uh, today uh, print is uh, being substituted by uh, digital uh, of course the is print has not been totally uh, is not totally out it is still is still in uh, there's a lot of visual impact that uh, comes out of print uh we are uh, uh you know doing the uh, front of the showroom that's important uh, being there in uh, you know on whatsapp sending out uh, messages through social media instagram and facebook and uh, any other platform that is uh, uh, where everybody is active on uh, our ways to reach out to the consumer it's very quick it's very fast you get your uh, likes and you get your uh, following you know what's happening uh, so um, all of this translates to like you know hitting uh, uh, not shooting in the dark but uh, trying to find out what is something that will really work and uh, making sure that that kind of stock is available at the showroom at the offline uh, uh, centers so uh, if all of this uh, promotion that we are doing today um, It, it it you cannot just uh, you know focus your attention on one particular uh, segment it has to be 360 uh, the the proportion of uh, uh, engagement is varying today uh, like i said earlier the print is uh, uh, you know being substituted by other other forms um, so i think you ca- you have to look at radio you have to look at tv you have to look at uh, print you have to look at digital medias so it's it's everything and in store as well yeah uh you know you mentioned having an online presence are you also now you must be selling your products online yes so what percentage is now coming via online versus offline and 
we have about uh, three to five percent of our sales coming from uh, online currently. Uh, currently. And uh, um, like I said, uh, every every store which is offline should have an online presence. Uh, the online, uh, what it does is it creates that interest and uh, it moves people to actually go go in your direction. Uh, so um, you know, this is what we're trying to do with the advertising as well. Like, so if you were to be in the print media, you're also doing that. Uh, you know, you you're getting people to become aware of your brand. Probably you have something which is out there in the in the ad, which is tempting for them to actually come and take a look, or at least talk about it, share it, and maybe somebody else will uh, walk in because of that information being passed around. A festive season is just around the corner. So, what is the sentiment, uh, customer sentiment that you are seeing, and your expectations from the festive season? Are you seeing more growth this year compared to last year? Um, God's grace, uh, year on year, it's been uh, good for all of us. Uh, the economy is booming. It's booming at the highest pace. Uh, 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 no other, no other economy is growing at the speed of the Indian economy. And uh, uh, with that in mind, uh, I think uh, we all have to realize that there's going to be a, a big uh, boom for all of us in in retail, in every every sphere of business that we are, we are in. Uh, there is going to be a boom. Uh, uh, today, it's very important that quality is delivered uh, without sacrificing, uh, you know, whatever because uh, the speed at which we have to do uh, execute uh, orders. Uh, should never compromise the quality or the workmanship. Uh, that is very important. We are seeing uh, that a lot of Indian brands are making it big in international markets. And all of this is possible only because they are, uh, you know, we all need to, like, you know, uh, make sure that our back end operations are absolutely capable of delivering uh, even in the shortest duration. We do not uh, uh, make mistakes. The possibility of, uh, of making a mistake uh, should be down to nil. But uh, what are your expectations from the festive season? Are you, uh, ex you know, are you estimating that you will go say by ten percent, fifteen percent year on year, and the consumer sentiment is positive? Yes, uh, I, think, I, I think. I think. I think eight and a half percent is the growth rate, or close to that. Uh, so um, we are hoping to grow at. Above that, of course. So, a, a minimum of about 10 to 12 percent is what we are hoping to grow. That's right. Yes. Now, you also mentioned that brands, uh, Indian brands, are now making their move abroad. You have a store in Dallas. Yes. But what are your future expansion plans? Are you looking to open more stores outside Chennai, which is your hub and stronghold? Yes, we are. Uh, we are uh, looking to open one in Coimbatore. And a few others uh, in the offing will be Trichy and a, a few other cities. Um, we are also looking to expand in Chennai. And uh, uh, one store is coming up in Chrome Pit, uh, which will be ready by 2026. Um, the uh, other store, we are getting our own uh, flagship store we're ready by the first, uh, first quarter of uh, next year. And... Um, there's uh, lots of lots of things that are going to happen for the for BBJ in the in the years to come. So outside Tamil Nadu, also you're looking at expanding, say to yeah. Bangalore or Hyderabad. Yes, we are. Markets. Yes, we are. But we'll first uh, take the low hanging fruits that are the markets within uh, within, within Tamil, Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Now, uh, besides your expansion plans, what can we expect from BBJ looking ahead? Uh, we have. Uh, Always delivered in terms of the new designs. Uh, we have uh, constantly done more and more collections. Uh, these are uh, in-house, uh, uh, designed in-house, manufactured in-house, and uh, um, sold only at VBJ, uh, VBJ's locations. Uh, so uh, we are constantly looking to make something which is different. Uh, recently, we launched the multi-sapphire range in uh, platinum, the first of its kind in India. Uh, it it had uh, created a lot of uh, uh, interest. Uh, we've had fantastic sales. Uh, we've also taken this product uh, to the US, and again, uh, they found it. Uh, the the consumers enjoyed uh, seeing this range. And uh, platinum prices are at an all-time low compared to gold. Um, so platinum is doing well 
as a, as a separate uh, market so i should be looking at buying platinum and jewelry at the current moment uh well i think uh, nothing's going to uh, take over uh, gold india's uh, fascination is india's for fascination for gold i think whatever we have it will be uh, extending our wardrobe uh, you know you will have more uh, versatility uh, i think uh, you know some of us like uh, white uh, the white in the, in the metal uh, and platinum is pure white so uh, there is white gold as well uh, white gold is alloyed so uh, it can lose its uh, whiteness uh, over a period of time thank you so much jitni for your time it was a really insightful conversation pleasure is mine thank you very much thank you okay.